we can get an opening statement. Uh, congratulations to Florida Atlantic. Uh, good basketball team. Played well. I thought they, when they, uh, they made shots at the right time, uh, I thought they came up with some really big offensive rebounds at a time when we really needed to finish our defensive possession. And uh, defensively, they played hard. Uh, so I just, again, just really congratulate them. Certainly proud of the effort that these guys have given us all year through a tough times at times with injuries. But, uh, and when it ends like this, it's always disappointing because we, we won it all and uh, came up short. But uh, proud of our team too for being in this position with a chance to, to move on. But again, uh, tonight, Florida Atlantic, they won, they played hard and uh, they deserve to move on. All right, we have senior guard Santiago Vescovi. We have senior guard Josiah Jordan James. Take questions for the, either of those two at this time. Just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Give your name and affiliation before asking the question. We'll start in the back. Yep. Uh, Joe Rex from The Athletic. Guys, what did they do better offensively uh, against you guys in the second half? Start with Santiago and then go to Josiah Jordan. Uh, first of all, they definitely made shots. Uh, they made the shots they had to make. Uh, like Coach said, uh, they got big offensive rebounds. Uh, they ran a couple actions that uh, they're really good basketball actions. Uh, they knock them down. And I think the biggest thing was offensive rebound for them. I just agree with what Santi said. I can't really add on to anything, but just echo what he said. Stay in the back. Do you have a question? Yep. Sure. Go ahead. This, this is for the players. I mean, how disappointing is this given the way the season started for you to have it end right here? Let's go with Josiah Jordan first and then Santiago. Well, I mean, we've been through so much in the past, you know, however long the season's been going on. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't know all the things that we've been through internally. And so even to make it this far, is a blessing. I mean, people had counted us out after the second game that we lost to Colorado. They, they, the season, they told us our season was over then. But you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't hear any of that. We, didn't, we heard it, but we didn't listen to it. We, we stayed resilient. And I think that if you guys or everybody outside of our locker room knew all the things that we went through, they'd be you know, um, proud of us. I know we're proud of ourselves. We, we know we wanted more, but there's so much stuff that went on that you know, injuries and people in and out the lineup where a lot of people would just quit. But I give a lot of credit to my, my teammates and our coaching staff. Nobody in that locker room gave up on us. And I'm just so proud of my guys um, that we were able to reach it. Obviously, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'm, I'm proud that we were able to come this far. OK. Any more questions for the student athletes? We'll come up here in the front. Troy Provo here in the Maribel Daily Times. Josiah, I know y'all are obviously still digesting this one, but when you look back at that first half, how much do you guys think that'll just kind of be like y'all feel like that was a missed opportunity considering how many shots they missed and y'all were only able to go up, I think, five or seven points at halftime? What was the question again? I mean, I think it was... Obviously, I mean, we went to halftime with a five-point lead. Obviously, we, we missed open shots. They missed open shots. But, I mean, we, weren't, we were disappointed in the way we played. We knew we had to play tougher. But, I mean, we were up five points. So We do have uh, people on Zoom. I'm going to go to Dan Tortora, uh, who has his hand raised on the Zoom call. So, Dan, I'm allowing you to talk. So, hold on. So, go ahead if you have a question. Yeah, just uh, as hard as this is right now for you guys in this moment, for, for both of the student athletes, what do you reflect upon this season that you are proud of? I know you said a lot of things happened this season that not a lot of people know about. So when you look at that adversity, what are you proud of? Let's start with Santiago and then we'll go Josiah. Definitely everything Josiah said. Uh, we've been through a lot of things and we were in a position where uh, most other people would just quit. Uh, they would just give up on the season and just wait for the next one to come up. Uh, and I never had that feeling from this team. Uh, I think the whole team, uh, through adversity, uh, we stuck together. Uh, we couldn't get it done today, but during the whole season, I think, uh, we all stuck together. We had each other's back, and we just fought. 
I think we fought through everything we could. And yeah, we're disappointed that we lost today, but uh, I think this team gave everything it could. I'm just proud of the way um, people stepped up. I'm proud of the way Jemai Meshack stepped up. I'm proud of the way Julian Phillips stepped up. I'm proud of the way Tobey Awaka stepped up. I'm proud of the way Jonas Adu stepped up. I'm proud of the way BJ Edwards stepped up. Like guys were put in positions, you know, that they weren't particularly ready for and they were thrown in the fire and I feel like they, they handled it the best that they could and they came in each and every day with, you know, their hard hats on, expecting to get better, trying to get better. And that's all you can, can hope for out of your teammates. And we just got a group of guys who are just resilient and they just want to keep getting better. And I'm just proud of all of my teammates, but especially the guys who, who had to step, and play, step up and play bigger roles and bigger minutes. Okay, we'll, we're going to dismiss the student athletes at this time. Once again, Tennessee locker room is open until 1233. Uh, at this time, if we have questions for Coach Barnes, once again, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over. We'll start over here on the right side. Let's start on the end, and then we'll go into the aisle. Ryan Shelbert, Rocky Top Insider. Just from your vantage point, what went wrong in that 18-2 run in the second half? Well, I, I thought one in the first half, uh, they had some shots that we were lucky we dodged that. And But when they uh, started scoring, our offense wasn't very good. And uh, we gave up too many drives. And then along with that, uh, offensive rebounds where we let them get downhill. And uh, – a couple situations where uh, those those we did a better job in the second half staying down on shot fakes early in the first half. That's why we were, we were getting into so much uh, rotation because we were leaving our feet. Went under a few ball screens, but uh, uh, I thought offensively and uh, we didn't we needed to continue to put pressure on them at the rim, whether it was throwing it inside or whether it was driving the ball, and we didn't do enough of that. Uh, where we got the ball there, we needed to finish more to continue to keep pressure on them to where they had to guard us. And then uh, they got some separation. They got they got relaxed. And I mean, they're, they're a really good shooting team. They, they shoot it. But uh, uh, the offensive rebounds were, those were big. And uh, we, we normally don't do that, but we did today. We'll stay in, yep, on the aisle there in row two. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Just, Coach, you cited the offensive rebounds, but just the rebounding overall. I mean, I, I think pre, pre-game, I would, myself and a lot of people would have thought that you would have, that you, you would have had a big advantage on the glass and they out-rebounded you in the well, game. Well, again, we wanted to. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, you, you need, we needed to, Jemai Meshack, you saw what he was able to do with dri- driving the ball. We needed more of that from, you know, more than one player. We needed our post players because they were staying out there. Really, you, I mean, you, we could get the ball inside if our post guys would get the post up. And then they did start digging down a little bit more. But early in the game, the, it was wide open. They were they were really hugging up to our perimeter guys, which a lot of teams have done that to us this year, and something we expected today. And the only way you're going to make them change is if you're really scoring at a at a high clip. And then when we got there a couple times in the second half. The ball should have been passed out, and because uh, we we needed to make some of those perimeter shots, and we again when they put three guys around the ball, it's got to get it's got to get out of your hands. But uh, again, we needed to be more aggressive going at the basket. And I thought in the second half, and and then they they, they did they they were again they didn't change a whole lot other than what they were doing in the first half. They run what we'd call a little bit of notch action, but I just thought that we. Um, allowed them to get downhill and not guard the ball the way we needed to. We'll go back to the end of the second row, third why, row. Why did you all decide to stick with the two big lineup in the second half and, and not go four guards? Why two big lineups? Because, again, the way they were guarding us. And, again, when we go more guards, you know, we, we don't feel like we get that much more dribble penetration out of it. We need to get more of that. But, uh, and again, we felt like, you know, early in the game you saw we were scoring at the rim. But and uh, we started, and we should have kept going at it, which we were trying to. But then when they dig in there, we got to kick it out. And uh, you know what? When, when you when you talk about games and substitution, we we we're around these guys so much, and we we read their body language. We know where we feel like they are, and some of it has to do with that answer, not just on the offensive end, but it's the defensive end too. We we had some breakdowns with, with certain players today that uh, we just felt like that they weren't locked in as much as they needed to be. And then 
some guys were in, you know, arguably one of the biggest games of their lives, and you could just body language. We just didn't feel like they were locked in as much as we needed them to be, and you'd expect them to be, but it's a big stage. Go back a couple rows. Yeah. Rick, you said after the, the Texas game in January that you wanted to see this team improve through February. That, that uh, Do you feel like that ever happened? And, and if not, you know, why not? Well, well Tom Satkoviak told me we haven't had a healthy team since February the 8th with everybody healthy. And uh, so if you ask me, did we improve, we did. Because when you have to tweak and change stuff as much as we had to just to put guys in a position to be comfortable – I mean, we went through up a, a here. I mean, Jamal Meshack hasn't played point guard until February since he's been here. I mean, he's he's done it in practice in terms of just – but to put him out there where he's really trying to learn how to run a team and where he had, where he had given us uh, – where he had been so good rebounding the ball, playing off the ball. Tyreek Key has never played point guard until he came to Tennessee. And, again, he would tell you that he's more of a scorer. But – yeah, I, I, there's no doubt we've improved or we wouldn't be here today. And uh, uh, the fact is, it's, it's always disappointing when you know you're close to going after the goal that I think we all chase, and that's to be the last team standing. But as a group, uh, yeah, we, we got better. We wouldn't have made it this far. We're going to come across the room right here in front of me in row one. Go ahead. Troy Provo here in Maryville Day Times. Rick, your seniors go a combined 14 of 50 from the floor. Just as a coach, how Say that again. You, your seniors go a combined 14 of 50 from the floor. As a coach, just how hard is it to watch, you know, a group of guys kind of struggle collectively like that? It's hard. I mean, we, you know, again, uh, I could sit here and talk about a lot of different things, but the fact is those guys have been through a lot. You know, they've uh, dealt with uh, Josiah's, I think, dealt with a lot of injuries, but yet he's tried to do everything he could to help this team. And and uh, Santi, the same way. Uh, Olivier, you know, obviously we wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for what he did the other day. And uh, I'd like to think that, uh, you know, Urosh certainly helped us. He got, again, a, a little bit too emotional tonight, and it, and it came back on him. But uh, – these guys have won a lot of games for us, and uh, it's hard. I'm telling you, it's hard to be in the locker room with these guys when you know how much they, how hard they've worked. And I would tell you, they, they've maxed out in a lot of good ways. Uh, and again, would I like to say, sit here and tell you, I wish we had our, our full allotment of players and teams? Yeah, but we didn't. And I think it's a real compliment to our seniors because they're the ones that continue to stay together and didn't get down on each other, try to help pull the young guys along with them. But uh, I, I feel for them because I know that's not – when they look at it, they're not going to be happy with it. And uh, because, again, you don't – it's hard to get here. And uh, – but I can only tell you we're proud of this group of seniors and what they've done with our program. We're going to do two more questions. We'll come here on the aisle, and then I'm going to go back to the Zoom call. So here on the aisle. Uh, Rob Lewis from VolQuest.com. Coach, sticking with the seniors, and it may be too soon to answer this question, but assuming that was their last game, four guys, one from Uruguay, one from Serbia, one from, you know, Finland and, and Charleston, South Carolina, come together, you know, got super close. I mean, how are you going to remember that, that group? Well, they're special. I mean, because of what we, you know, they went through the COVID together. Uh, the fact that with we're – college basketball is today with the transfer portal and you know at the end of the year everybody's got options now to do this or do that but um, I will I will remember that they in so many ways just represented the University of Tennessee in a first class way they created a, a great love affair with Rocky Top and our fan base which I've told many people it's the, I think it's the best out there and uh, uh, that they're what we want our program to be about. Uh, high character, uh, come from great families, great work ethics, and um, really uh, of that group, there's not one selfish guy on that group. And um, what they've done for our program, and it, uh, you know, it's we, we've said when we came eight years ago, we we want to be here every year. There's no question about that. And when it ends, it seems like so abruptly that you look back like tonight. I mean, the Sweet 16 is something to be proud about. 
but again, when you get there, you want more. You want an Elite Eight. You want a Final Four. You want a national championship game. And uh, the fact that these guys, again, kept climbing and trying to work every year. Uh, and I told them in a couple of weeks we'll look back and realize that, you know, they've got a lot to be proud of. All right, we're going to go to the – back to Zoom, uh, to Dan. <coughs> I believe, Dan, you should be on right now. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, you spoke about how hard it is to make this tournament. With so many different conferences represented in the Sweet 16, what can you say about the state of college basketball? Well, again, this, this is a game that doesn't matter if – players come in and play one year and leave or whatever. I mean, there's nothing like college basketball. I mean, when guys leave, new guys emerge, new guys come on. This time of year, you know, there's those stars are born. And uh, I think that college, there's a lot in our game that we're going to have to talk about and think about. I mean, you know, obviously through the months, people have talked about the transfer portal, the NIL, this, that, whatever. I've always said this, and I've always believed that you've got to build the program the way you want to represent your university, and there's enough guys to do that. And uh, I think you've got to have a great coaching staff. And at Tennessee, you know, we've got the best administrators in the country that uh, they're committed to giving our student athletes the very, very best opportunities and, and experiences. And uh, you know what, I like to think that other universities do too, but uh, I've been doing it a long time, and I know that's I like to say I like to see them all do what we do at the University of Tennessee with uh, our administrators, what they – not just basketball, football, baseball, you name it. And I just think going forward, the game's always going to be a great game. There's nothing that captivates our country like, like this NCAA tournament, nothing. Because every state in our country has a chance to be represented some way, somehow. And a team like Florida Atlantic, I mean, think about what it does for them and their school. and. And uh, every year there's somebody, you know, like that. Uh, Kansas State team that was picked last in their league. Uh, here their two teams are playing for a Final Four. And uh, that's what makes, makes it March Madness. But don't ever, ever, ever take for granted uh, how hard it is to get here to start with and then how hard it is to win a game and then another game because it's really, really hard. But, um, again, I think – we're going to uh, – the game is going to continue to be what it is, and I do think it will continue to grow and get better. Coach, we appreciate you taking right. the time. Thank you. Tennessee locker room will be open for eight more minutes until 1233. It is currently 1225.